What an adventure. Chris here with Hollywood Haunter, and today we're gonna build the sign from Indiana Jones ride at Disneyland. So let me show you what I got going on here. The Indiana Jones adventure ride sign that hangs at the park is probably about four foot wide and five or six inches thick, and it hangs from a faux branch. And what's cool about making this prop is we already have everything we need to make this here at the house. This thing looks like a giant spear hook. Or maybe it could be like a giant foam dart that shoots out of a statue in the wall. <laughs> After cutting a smaller piece of foam to work with, I drew myself some guidelines so I could shave down the piece to a consistent thickness using a curry brush and a sanding block. I then cut the final size on the table saw and I ended up with a piece that was about 23 by 22 and 3 inches thick. After doing some searching around for some lost tools, I started making a template using a couple scrap pieces of quarter inch MDF. I used a projector and traced the overall shape and text onto paper. Then I sketched out one side of the sign on the MDF and carefully cut out the shape and cleaned up all the edges real nice. Then I used that piece to trace around and make a copy. That way I had two halves. Since I don't have a hot wire cutting table, I can attach the two halves to both sides of the foam and then use it as a guide for my homemade hot wire foam cutter to cut really nice edges. Then all I have to do is a light sand with some heavy grit paper. And just like that, my little archeologist, we have ourselves a sign. Doo -doo -doo -doo, doo -doo -doo. This stuff can eat foam. So I'm gonna spray it on the paper, let it get tacky, and then stick it on the foam. All right, so cutting letters on white styrofoam is not as cool as doing it with the blue or pink solid foam sheets, but this is what I have. So I tried a couple different things to possibly help prevent the beads from chipping, like pre-cutting all my lettering and adding a protective coat of paint. I'm using a router and a Dremel tool to cut out my quarter inch drop around all my lettering. I've attached both of them to scrap pieces of quarter inch plexiglass for better control. An idea I saw from my man Derek over at Van Oaks Prop Foundry. This worked so awesome, it made it easy to take more time and be careful around all those small letters. All right, so all the lettering is all cut out for the most part. I've got to go back and kind of do a little more cleaning. Now the next thing to do is to route out my little curly guys down here. And to do that, what I did is I just drew out a template that covers up one side and then I just flipped it over and traced this side as well. After I finish with the routing, I normally start applying drywall mud to smooth over the foam, but I have some leftover epoxamite laminating resin that I can apply so I don't have to be so gentle with this thing. I can sand and apply drywall mud after and not worry about chipping any of the letters or edges. All right, the hard coat's all dry, and what's nice is it's thick enough on there to where I can do a light sand. I can also um, still route out some of the letters and clean them up a little bit. But uh, now I don't need to worry about this thing breaking. And what's nice too is the next step that I'm actually going to do is once I do a light sand, I'm going to start applying some drywall mud and I can, you know, tool it around and I can fill in any of these pits and make the surface kind of have the texture that Disneyland has at the park. And then I may also redraw my edges using a straight edge and stuff and then go back and try to clean these letters up as best as I can. They're not bad. This is kind of funny right here in the O on the Jones. My bit actually came out of my little Dremel and it went way down in there and still kept digging out. So I got to fill that up. After carefully studying the snakes up close, I got a pretty good idea what they look like. Snakes. Why do it have to be snakes? I've got this scrap piece of this high density sculpting foam. Uh, I've had this thing for years just sitting in the back. It's upside down now, but if you can imagine the snake head wrapping around and looking out and then the bottom right here matching. So it's actually the perfect size. It's about 10 inches high 
and about six inches deep, five inches wide. First thing I'm gonna do is cut myself two slices at five inches, and then I'll try to cut down as much of this as I can with saws, and then I'll start sculpting my snakes. I haven't decided if I wanna sculpt one snake and make a mold, and then cast both in a, like a resin. Or the other option, it's a little more work, but if it's not too much trouble to carve this snake, I may just carve two of them. So this is one of those things where I'll keep working on this and working on this. Eventually what either happens is I lose interest and want to do something else or I run out of time or something, but I feel like this is good enough for this project and I went ahead and carved a second one. I decided not to do the mold way and I just banged out another one. This was a little bit more of one of those situations where I used my artistic freedoms on this. They're not exact. The only reason why is I didn't take any reference pictures at the park of these guys. And uh, I know the tongue is a little bit different and that kind of thing, but honestly, I was just going off of whatever pictures people took that they posted on the internet and nobody really had any close up pictures that I could find. Everything was from people that just were vlogging going on the ride itself. They didn't really focus on the sign too much. I didn't have any good shots like from this angle or this angle. I had a lot of shots from this angle, so I felt really good about that. So now I'm ready to hard coat these with polyester resin. Once they're all dry tomorrow, I can give them a light sand and they'll be ready for paint. I also added a couple little pieces of matte fiber right here, so that way when the rope wraps around it, it gives it a little bit of extra strength. I lost a little bit of my detail, but that's something I can go back and paint in later. Back over on my sign, once I'm finished with all the drywall mudding, I can apply another layer of hard coat to the rest of the sign. Now it's time to make the branch that the sign hangs from, just like at Disneyland. Instead of doing a whole stand like they have at the park, I'm just going to do the section of branch that the sign actually hangs from. So first I'm gonna cut this at about 29 inches, and then I'm gonna to try to shape it, kind of like the one at the park. Kind of make it look a little more, instead of a log that I bought at the store, I'm gonna to try to bring back that branch quality. As I'm grinding this log down, the problem that I have is that I can only go straight. So to fix this and to create a branch that comes out, what I did is I flattened a little area, and then I cut a little piece of scrap two by four. And now what I'll do is I'll glue and clamp it into place. After that dries, I can then continue to shape that branch and it won't look like it's just a straight tree. 
After sanding it all smooth, I just used some lightweight Bondo to fill in all the cracks, and then I went over it with a light wash of latex paint to cover it all up. To create the little detailed border around the outside of the sign, I just used some wet clay. I let it dry out, and then I sealed it really well with some paint. After I used a Dremel to get all my angled grain lines, I applied a couple different shades of gray by using brushes, sea sponge, and then the wiping away and shading methods. I didn't get a lot of footage of the painting process, but if you're interested, it's basically the same method as we used in our tombstone makeover video. I needed to make a couple of mounts to attach the branch to the wall. To do this, I just used some quarter inch flat stock, and then I bolted a couple pipe hangers that fit around the post perfectly. I tried to match the rope loops the best I could by using electrical tape and pieces of string. And then the last thing there was to do was glue the snakes into place and for that I just used expanding foam and then taped them into place until it cured. Welcome my friends to the Temple of the Forbidden Eye. I, Sala, shall now give you counsel to safeguard your miraculous viewing. Here in this video, Chris has shown us his ingenious way to construct this adventure sign. Now that it is finished, and to keep you safe and sound, here are special mounts attached to the wall. You see the excellence of this invention? This sculpting journey wasn't easy, smoothing over all the rough and rugged styrene. And then suddenly you're hard coding and then faux painting suddenly. It is unlike anything you have ever fabricated, I assure you. Now my friends, one more final word of advice. Once you've made a sign like this, look not into the eyes of the idol. That would be dangerous. Very dangerous. This thing belongs in a museum. Look into my eye. I told you not to look in the eye. Do, 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 do.